This video is about the per unit system of analysis. It gives you the basics of the per unit system. In other words, the normalization process that brings you into per unit and the reverse of that, which takes you back out again. But there is a lot more to the per unit analysis technique that you can find on my website at get pspt.com that you see there in blue on the slide. If you uh, choose to take that or purchase that particular course, then you'll find the details of how a per unit system is used, especially when in a three phase system, when you uh, encounter Y to delta and delta to Y type transformers. But without further ado, here is the introduction to the per unit system of analysis. The per unit system uh, is basically taking uh, voltages, currents, impedances, and MVA, etc., of a system and comparing them to a pre selected base voltage, base current, base impedance, and MVA base, such that the voltage over the voltage base and the current over the current base, etc., will provide you with a ratio. And that ratio is called a per unit value. The process for getting there is called normalization. And we're going to go through that now. The main advantage of the per unit system is that it effectively removes the turns ratio of the transformers that are in the systems that are being analyzed. So we will begin the what we call the normalization process and the normalization process has five steps and some people refer to them as rules that's fine you can call them rules but if you follow these steps you can't get into trouble. There are four steps going into the normalization process or going into the per unit system and then there's one step that takes you back out of the per unit system into the regular system. Now the first step is to select an MVA base. It really should be the first step you pick a VA base because we're talking about volt amps. In this case we're going to say MVA base. Just remember there's a, an order of magnitude that you're dealing with and you have to take that into consideration when you're moving among, amongst the quantities. However, picking an MVA base is purely an arbitrary selection. It can be any number you want, believe it or not. But in order to make your, your quantities work out a little bit better and sometimes a lot better, you usually pick an MVA rating of, say, a generator or the MVA rating of a transformer or the MVA rating of a bus, whatever is the most prevalent quantity there. So if you have a transformer that's a 100 MVA, then you can pick 100 as your MVA base. The first thing you have to and really remember for all of your quantities is the fact that base values are magnitudes only. All the quantities that we're going to be dealing with in, in the system, whether it's MVA, power, reactants, uh, impedance or voltage or current, they are all what we call electrical vectors or phasers. And they are made up of a quantity plus an angle. And they are rated a, as a voltage or an MVA or whatever. So you have this magnitude and angle that you're dealing with. But when you pick an MVA base, you are only going to use the magnitude only. So if you pick a transformer of 100 MVA, the 100 MVA is a straight scalar quantity. There's no direction to it. It still has the order of magnitude MVA, but it's just a number. It's not a vector or a phaser. The next step is you're going to determine what your base voltage is. And again, base voltages, or sorry, voltages in the system are made up of magnitude and angle because they are 
electrical vectors or phasors. So when you pick a voltage though, you're going to be dropping the direction or the angle of it and you're only going to deal with the magnitude. It's still volts and it's only going to be a magnitude quantity. The next thing that you have to be aware of is that there is a voltage base for every level of voltage in the system. So when you see a system like this, Transformers are usually rated in the system line-to-line -line voltages, and that's fine. Their ratios will still be line-to-line -line values, but they will designate the ratios of the transformer. Once you pick a voltage as your voltage base, all the other bases in the location of the various transformers are determined by the transformer ratios. So how does that work? If we select a voltage rating of line one to be our base voltage, and we can pick any one of those voltages or any voltage, but again, you pick something that is relevant to what you're studying because then it makes the calculations easier. So in this case, we're gonna select the line one voltage of 220 kV as our base voltage. So our base voltage is 220 kV. Once that is selected, then all of the other bases are determined. So the red, and I put color in here just to discern where you are in the transformer system. The red, which is the bus voltage for the generator on the left, the base for that area is 22 kV. The base voltage for the motor bus on the right hand side is 11 kV and the voltage base for the 110 kV or the line 2 is 110 kV because we've picked 220 we then use the, vo the transformer voltage ratios to determine what the other voltage bases are. So we have determined that there is more than one uh, voltage base when we're involving transformers in our calculation. So we need to spend a, just a little bit more time having a closer look at that so that we fully understand it. When we started out, we said that the second step was to pick a voltage base. And that voltage base is arbitrary. We could pick any voltage we want. However, to make things easy, you usually pick something that is associated with your your system analysis, in this case, it's going to be the voltage level of line one. And line one is 220 kV. So we say the voltage or voltage base one for anything connected to or associated with anything inside that green box is going to use voltage base one voltage, which is 220 kV. Now, the, the rest of the voltage bases are determined by the transformer ratios. So if we look at the generator bus uh, associated with transformer T1 and T3, that voltage is 22 kV by virtue of the transformer ratios. So anything inside that red box is going to be using VBase2 for its calculations or 22 kV. Similarly, anything landing inside that blue box which is the voltage base that you have to use when associating with any calculations or anything to do with anything inside that blue box, you have to use 110 kV as your voltage base or VBase 3. And that was determined by the turns ratio of T3 or any one of the other transformers, but we can say T3 for now. Lastly, VBase 4, there's another voltage base determined by the transformer ratios, and that is going to be 11 kV. So anything inside that little box that we just drew there now, uh, designated by VBase4, any calculations involving the current, voltage, impedance, all of that has to use VBase4, which is 11 kV. Now, we've introduced the first two steps 
of the normalization process. Once these two bases are picked or set, then all the other bases are set and are calculated from the MVA and the voltage bases. So in step three, we want to calculate our impedance base and our current bases. But we don't have an arbitrary choice in this case because we've already picked the voltage base and we've already picked the MVA base or the VA base. So they automatically determine what your impedance base and your current base is. And you use that with your, you find out what those impedance and current bases are by using your standard electrical equations, for example, Ohm's law. Z base is going to be the V base squared all over S base, which is equal to KV base squared all over MVA base. The I base is given by the S base all over the V base, which is equal to KVA base all over KV base, which is equal to MVA base times 1000 all over the KV base. A word of caution here that when you're using these formulas, you're dealing with impedances, voltages, and currents, and VA. The KVA, if you're going to use KVA quantities or MVA quantities, you have to multiply them by either a thousand or a million, depending on what value it is. Remember that impedance is given by V squared all over S, and V is a voltage. It's not a KV, it's not an MVA or MV, it's a voltage. So just keep that in mind that you're dealing with voltages only and you have to keep track of your thousands or millions depending on what you're using. So now we have performed step three of the normalization process we were calculating the impedance bases and the current bases, and we had to use or calculate them from the MVA base or the voltage, the voltage bases. And notice I said bases because there is more than one voltage base. So if there's more than one voltage base, because we use the voltage to calculate the Z base and the I base, then there's going to be an impedance base and a current base for every level of voltage that's in our system. So in our example that we looked at, we have a voltage base of 220 kV. So we have a Z base associated with that voltage level and a current base associated with that voltage level. Similarly, we will have a voltage base and a current base associated with the 22 kV and we will have a, an impedance base and a current base for the 11 kV uh, level or the 11 kV uh, voltage base. And lastly, there will be an impedance and a current base, an impedance base and a current base for the voltage base of 110 kV. This brings us to step four, the normalization process. Now we can start to calculate the per unit quantities of the individual items in our system. And there's a simple process for calculating per unit quantities. And a per unit quantity, regardless of its voltage or current or MVA or whatever it is, the per unit quantity is equal to the actual value the actual voltage or the actual current or the actual impedance all over the base value of whatever that quantity is. Remember our first slide when we said that it is a ratio of an actual quantity over a predetermined base value. So that's what we're doing. All we do is we put the actual value over our base value, which we know now, and that would look something like this. So you have a magnitude and an angle in this case, I'm picking an MVA. Uh, it could be voltage, it could be current. But whatever the actual value is, it's going to be a, an electrical vector or a phasor. So it's going to be made up of a quantity and an angle. But remember, our base value is only made up of a magnitude. 
So when you look at this fraction, you have a, a quantity and an angle and an MVA and a quantity, which definitely gives us a ratio, but it also maintains the fact that it's still a phasor and the MVA quantities cancel out and you're left with what is in green there, I've indicated by 0.XXX, whatever the ratio of the green quantities, the quantity over the base quantity is. The thing to see here is that you're now left with a fractional number, which is a phasor, and the direction of that phasor takes on the same direction as the actual quantity. So the angle just moves over to the right, and you're just going to deal with the ratio, and it's going to be a per unit value, which is probably less than one because it's going to be a ratio of, of uh, an actual value to a base quantity value. Okay, just as an aside, uh, and again, at the risk of repeating myself, but this is an important point, that when you're doing your per unit calculations, you're going to be using base value quantities. And those base value quantities depend on the location in the system. So remember, the location bounded by the uh, rectangles that you see up in, the in our example diagram there, we have a 22 kV area, an 11 kV area, a 220 kV area, and a 110 kV area. You have to use the appropriate base value depending on where it is in the system. And finally, this brings us to the last step in the normalization process. As I said, the first four steps brought you into the per unit system. The last step is when you come out of the per unit system. And that is for each component, its actual value may be found by multiplying its per unit quantity by the base value for that quantity, where it's connected, of course, in the system. So we use the formula that you see on the bottom side of this uh, slide, where the per unit quantity was calculated by putting the actual quantity over the base quantity. We now just rewrite that equation in order to calculate our actual quantity. And our actual quantity, or the actual value of the quantity, is the quantity in per unit times the base value of that quantity. Keeping in mind where you are in the system, so you have to use the appropriate base quantity. And that's it. That's the normalization process. That's all there is to per unit analysis. So this ends the introduction to per unit analysis and what normalization or the normalization process is. So I encourage you to go to my website which is getpspt.com and you'll get the full version of the course on per unit analysis.